Keep your heads up and keep smiling, family. You're part of the last generation, and we're living in the last days. And we're watching and waiting for the rapture, and it's exciting because we know the truth, Jesus Christ, and he's coming to get us. And here's the verse of the day. And it's Psalms chapter 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Well, you know that he knows that we're all thinking, I hope he takes us home now so we could go to the biggest celebration ever in history. The marriage supper of the Lamb. And I'll see you there, fam. Now on to the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, right where Jesus Christ said they would be. All right, so here's what the moon, Mars, and Venus looks like right now. And if you seen it last night, it was amazing. And they were in the shape of a V. And it reminded me of Jesus Christ, victorious over death in the grave. And I'm feeling his Holy Spirit. All glory to you, Father, in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. All right, family. So I want to encourage you and remind you. The wise men, they followed the star of Bethlehem and it led them to Jesus Christ. And this year, the wandering star they call Venus appeared in the west and it's been bigger and brighter than ever. And the conjunctions have gotten more publicity than ever before. Matthew chapter 2 verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And they seen the star in the east. And we're seeing this star in the West. And they rejoiced and were excited and had great joy. And I'm rejoicing and I'm excited and I'm joyful. Because Jesus Christ said the signs would be in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And this is exactly what he was talking about. And these conjunctions that we're seeing with our own eyes are getting the whole world's attention. And we know it's the Father comforting us. And it's pushing us to sound the alarm and wake people up. And it's giving us rapture material so we can warn the people. What people? The people that are asleep and are not watching. And a lot of them are our brothers and sisters. And a lot of them are drinking and surfeiting and caught up in the cares of this world. And that's why Jesus Christ says the world will be caught like a snare when he comes. Caught off guard. When he comes like a thief in the night. When people think he ought not come. Like right now. Today. This summer. Or this jubilee year. And I touched on this before and I'll show you why I'm going back over it in a second. Acts 16, 14. And a certain woman named Lydia a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Acts 16.40 And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. And remember, Lydia was a seller of purple. She was known for her purple dye. Now let me remind you, John 19, 5, then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe that more than likely came from Lydia, the seller of purple. And here's why that's so gigantinormous right now. Because right now, the asteroid Lydia is a part of this conjunction that's happening right now, today. And when you zoom in, you can see Lydia is lined up with the moon, right on top of the moon, right now, headed for the backwards question mark, the head of the lion, the sickle. And I was searching comets today, and right under the handle of the sickle, Regulus, is comet 362. 
And when you go to Strong's Bible Concordance for Greek 362, the definition is to await. But what's gigantinormous is the usage. I await one whose coming is expected. And that's what we're doing, fam. Waiting and watching and expecting Jesus Christ to come and get us and take us to that place that he prepared for us. In our Father's house, in heaven. And I'll wrap it up with this, because it's right around the corner. If we're still here, four full supermoons in a row start on July 3rd. And when you scroll down, it says it right here. The July 3rd, 2023 full moon is the first in a series of four full supermoons in a row. July 3rd, August 1st, August 31st, which is also a blue moon, so that will be a full blue supermoon. And the fourth one, September 29th. And the first one, July 3rd, is expected at 1138 Universal Time. And when you go to Strong's Greek, 1138, the time the full moon is expected to peak, the definition is David. And the usage is David, King of Israel. But here's what's gigantinormous if we're still here. August 1st, the full moon is expected to peak at 1831 Universal Time. And when you go to Strong's Greek for 1831, the time of the full moon, August 1st, the definition is to go or come out of. Usage, I go out, come out. And if we're still here, I'll go over the last two. And the third one, remember, it's a super blue moon. And just a heads up, and you can see this last year and the last several years that I've been watching, I've been noticing that the moon is blood red in August. As you can see in this picture right here, Sturgeon Supermoon 2022. On Tuesday, August 1st, the astronomical phenomenon that will also be known as the full sturgeon moon will occur on Tuesday, August 1st, 2023. The supermoons are coming, family. And if we're still here on the second and the third one, when you scroll down, it says this year, August has two full moons and there are both supermoons. The full sturgeon moon reaches its peak on Tuesday, August 1st, 2023, with the blue sturgeon supermoon peaking on Wednesday, August 30th. And obviously, time and date has it for August 31st. But the point is, the most rapture dreams that the body of Christ has had have been about two moons. Christina had one. My mom had one. The other watchmen and women that I communicate with and fellowship with have had them. Most of you have had them. I've seen endless comments saying that many of you have had rapture dreams and visions of the rapture happening during two moons. And I'm being hit with the Holy Spirit right now. All glory to you, Father, in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. And I'm not saying that any date is the rapture. But what I'm saying is it could be. The rapture could happen any day, right now, tomorrow, any time. And all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. Our brother, DJ Two Moons, sent me this picture of Venus and the moon. And Mars is there too. I'll show you. So I zoomed in. And it literally looks like Venus is a crescent moon. And what they call Mars is red. And it's kind of hard to see in this picture, but you could see it in the top left-hand corner. And if you go out tonight and look to the west, you'll see all three of them lined up in a row. Keep your heads up, family. I love you.